finds greatness in a man? What is it that makes a man rise to the top of his profession, a man to be dominant in the world of sports, the world of combat sports? It takes heart, it takes determination, it takes that fire to get into the ring and to fight over and over. Very few achieve that greatness, but this man here, Ramon Diamond Decker, has achieved that and more. A veteran of over 197 fights, Decker has fought all over the world and achieved a position very few fighters have achieved. He has done it by raging against his opponents, by devastating his opponents, by using his punching, by using his heart, by using his absolute sportsmanship. Ramon Decker has proven time and time again why he is among the greatest legends in the history of the martial arts. I'm here. My name is Stephen Quadros. I am the Fight Professor. Joined with me is Fred Royers, the WKA middleweight champion, and you know Ramon Decker quite well, don't you, Fred? I've seen Ramon come up through the ranks uh, as of 12 years of age. He was a young man uh, with an ambition, a man with a drive, and once he started to get the feeling of what he could do, he really rose to greatness. He is probably the most uh, respected Falang foreigner in Thailand, fighting like the Thais. He fought them all. He fought them on their rules, on the, in their land, in their rings, and he beat them. Yeah, I think that Decker is one of those kind of guys where he liked the challenge of fighting the best. And uh, let's go down and talk to Ramon Decker, the man behind the knockouts. Hello, my name is Raymond Decker. I'm from Breda, Holland. I'm 33 years old. I've been fighting for 20 years. I had almost 200 fights. I won 175 fights, 90 by KO. I am eight times world champion, kickboxing and Thai boxing. Ramon Decker, I followed your career from the beginning. Could you tell when you were getting involved in the martial arts? That's about 15 years ago. When were you born? 1969. 1969. At which date? 4 September. You have a very impressive list of fights. You fought over 200 times, and many of them you fought in Thailand under Thai rules. Of course you make a living of your sport. What are your hobbies, Ramon? Are there any specific hobbies you have? No, not specific. Uh, just normal things in life. Uh, go out with friends. Go out with friends, drink, drink uh, have some fun. Have some fun. Yeah. That's it, basically. So you're a very normal guy? Yeah, I am. <laughs> with a few scars. Yeah, but that's normal. For a Thai so boxer, after two and five. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why Thai boxing? Um, yeah, when I started in this gym in Breda 15 years ago, I like what I saw, so I started training over there. And that's how. Who was your first trainer? Ko Hemos. And he's still my trainer at this moment. Did you have other trainers? No, he's the, he was the first one, and I didn't have any other trainer, so. How did you train before a fight? Uh, I watched videos of my opponents, and then if I, when I saw the videos, I started training. How do you motivate yourself before your fights? Yeah, that's very difficult sometimes, but... Uh, yeah, you want to be the best, and you want to win that fight, so that's how I motivate myself. Any superstitions? No, I'm not so superstitious. Maybe my opponents are, but no, I'm not. What was your best fight? 
Yeah. Uh, I think my best fight was against Koban when I knocked him out in the first round in Bangkok, Thailand. Oh yes, it was definitely the best moment for Decker. Decker at his finest. He got Koban in trouble, and Fred, he went for that finish. Well, Koban was never knocked out before, and this was a huge surprise for the Thais. And look at the punching power of Ramon Decker. That has always been his greatest asset. Incredible punching power, his high kicks, his leg kicks, but he never stopped punching until Koban went down. Koban come back again, he's counted eight, but then again, Koban comes forward right into his doom. Yeah, right into his doom indeed because uh, Ramon jumps in with an elbow there and it was that left hook that ended matters right away. It was Ramon's finest hour, his own admission, a huge victory in Thailand against the champion, Kobal. Look at the total satisfaction on the faces of the Thais. They cannot believe what has happened. Worst fight? I don't have any worse fights, so... Toughest fight? Uh, also against Koban. I fought him four times, and they were all very tough fights. What was your most beautiful fight? Uh, when I won the world title against uh, Nampong in Amsterdam. And yes, it was Decker at his most beautiful. It was Decker with that punching and Decker with that beautiful left hook as he lands right here and puts the tough tie on the deck. And Decker was fighting in his hometown, Fred. He was fighting in his hometown, well, in Amsterdam. But at the same time, the uh, Thai television had insisted to broadcast this fight live to Bangkok, to Thailand. There were Thai referees, there were Thai commercials. Even in the corner post, there were Thai commercials, as you can see. Because everybody believed that he would not succeed in beating this, this man, this Nam Phon. But what he did was incredible. I was there, I was writing an article for one of the big magazines and covering this fight. But wow, was Decker in shape. He was fabulous. Yeah, Decker showed a variety of, t of attacks, but it was those punches in bunches that really had the Thai reeling most of the fight, being dominated, much to the Thai's credit. He didn't get knocked out clean, but Decker had a few surprises for him in the form of kicks to the face and there he is uh, winning the title being hugged by his uh, trainer and mentor core hammers the new world champion Ramon Decker what was your nicest and worst memory of fights or fighting I think the uh, the fights that I lost on points, but for, for myself, I, w I won. But they cheated, you know, especially in Thailand. They let me lose a fight, but I was for sure that I won this, that fight. What was your most emotional fight? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Which uh, championship was most important to you? My first world title fi uh, fight. In, it was in France against a Thai, the number one of Thailand. I won the uh, fight on points. Yeah, that was a very tough fight also. So. How has the sport of Thai boxing changed during your career? I, I think it's more professional now. In the beginning, when I started 15 years ago, it was more yeah, everybody fights o everywhere. It was m more smaller. The location was smaller. Not so much money. Now everything is uh, more organized. Bigger promoters, bigger, more people, more money. You have many fans. How do you feel about being an example for your sport? Yeah, it feels very good. That people have, uh, appreciate what uh, what you're doing and looking up to you, and yeah, that I'm an uh, example for them. You fought your way to the top, then injuries set in and set you back for a time uh, before you eventually came back to the top. Tell us about your injuries, training, endurance, everything that put you back on top. Mm -hmm. It was a very tough time then because I had six operations in two years because my ankle was very, uh, I don't know exactly what happened with my ankle, but uh, after 200 fights almost, my ankle was uh, finished. and. Uh, yeah, it was tough after uh, two months in, uh, in the hospital. Yeah, training for three months. Very tough at that time. 
but in two years' time I get uh, back to the same level. And as soon as Decker was well, he was back in the gym, working like a madman, on the heavy bag, doing the repetition necessary to develop his power, and also working many drills with partners. Uh, Decker, being an astute student of the craft, knew how to work not only by himself, but also with uh, that ever-important training partner. One thing you see is that he uh, is very controlled. He can, he can fight like a devil. At the same time, he can always train in a very precise and astute way. He is a really a scientist of the art. Uh, absolutely. And one thing about Decker is that it's the constant repetition of the technique, to develop the technique. He's not just some free-swinging wild man in there. He is a cold-blooded technician with, there with the intention to terminate. Now this is with Cor Hammers, his trainer and stepfather, who is uh, working the pass with him. And you can see the enormous power that Deck already possessed at that time. I mean, this man was 63 kilograms, and he fights and punch and kicks like a heavyweight. It's really incredible the way he fights, the way he works. Yeah, I had a special schedule with my trainer, Cor Hammers. We trained in a special way uh, to get me back... Uh, in the fighting, uh, on the fighting level. How do you look back? Yeah, very good, because I, uh, I won everything that I could have won in my sport, so. Do you still have goals left in your sport? No, not in my sport. I, uh, there's nothing more. So. And do you have goals after you retire? After my retire, I'm going to open my own gym, I think. Start training and doing seminars all around the world. So. You're not known very well in Holland, but you're very famous in Thailand and Japan. How do you feel about not being very well known in your own country? Yeah, I'm used to it now. In the beginning it was very young. Uh, when I walk on the streets in Thailand, everybody recognized me and asked for autographs and pictures. Yeah, here in Holland, uh, yeah, they don't know you. So, But you get used to it, I think. Do you think the public sees the sport of Thai boxing the same as they see other sports like football? No, I don't think so. I think the people got a very wrong uh, image of kickboxers. We are all criminals and uh, do bad things. But I think it's the wrong impression they got. I think we are top sporters, training hard, training every day, and watch uh, how, what we eat and how we eat. Don't go out. You know, we are very serious. Train more than, um, than a football player, I think. So uh, I think yeah, they got a very wrong image of kickboxers. The first time I fought uh, Cesar was a very short fight. Yeah. Uh, what I remember is that he uh, was constantly in the attack. You yeah. know, and uh, I hit him a couple of times very good with, with some punches, but at the end of the first round, I hit him very good with a left hook. And he went down, and the referee stopped the fight. Joel César n'a pas récupéré du tout, je peux vous l'assurer. Il va venir prendre des risques, et ça va être trop certainement. Quel Quel machine machine de guerre. Allez, César avait trouvé l'ouverture, mais il, il est retouché d'une droite. Il veut se battre immédiatement. C'est forcené, c'est fou ce que peut être la boxe taille. On boxe depuis une minute. Joel César ne sera pas champion du monde. Decker se garde son titre. On va peut-être discuter dans le coin de Joel César, mais 
Peut-on dire qu'il avait récupéré On va revoir des images que Didier Froly va nous renvoyer certainement qu'il n'avait pas récupéré complètement car il avait pris énormément de coups et pourtant il avait trouvé des solutions de contre encore dans, dans les ce dernières point. secondes. de mettre un seul coup de coude pour abréger le combat. Regardez encore cette droite, celle-là est terrible. C'est la première fois que Joël César va à terre là dans cette reprise. Et maintenant, bon, il semble avoir un peu récupéré, mais il avait pris beaucoup, beaucoup de coups. Donc dans cette catégorie des poids welter, Joël César n'est pas champion du monde. Le champion du monde reste le Hollandais. It was quite funny. The friends wanted to have their rematch. They wanted to have revenge. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. Ma one month later, was it? I think it was one month later. I know we all went to Paris. You, me, and about 100 fans from Holland. The atmosphere was very special. Everybody came with orange caps, jackets. We had the year 1988, and Holland just won the European Championships in soccer. Before the fight, we show you running around Paris and the Eiffel Tower and Arc de Triomphe. I can remember the fans were more tension than you, Ramon. Everybody knew César trained as a madman before this rematch fight. And again, it was his hometown, Paris, France, where the fight took place. Did the victory in the first fight give you an extra impulse for your destructive performance? Yeah, also. But uh, because they wanted to have the rematch, one month later I, I knew that uh, it, it wasn't good, you know. It was better for César also if he trained longer and had some more fights between. Yeah. But he wanted everything too fast, so we, yeah. It happened, it was almost the same as the first fight. I knocked him out in the third round this time. Yeah. But yeah, it was almost the same fight as, as the first one. Yeah, he got like two or three eight counts in that fight. It was really bad for the friends audience to see their favorite fighter getting destroyed for the second time within a month. Cesar took a lot of punishment in that fight. He got knocked out badly. Yeah. But he went down very long and heavy also. Uh, but the Frenchman came to rumble. Conventional wisdom was that the Frenchman chose too soon to come back with that one month. But Cesar was very tough in this rematch. And at first, it seemed to be a close fight. You can see that uh, Cesar has been training, especially in the clinch, trying to get the better of Ramon Decker there. The referee, the famous Kronksak, who is a very famous fighter himself. Um, but of course, they know Diamond Decker. Decker is moving forward now, once again stepping up a gear and then start those devastating punches again. But Cesar hung tough and he was going to be determined to take this into the late rounds and try and get Decker tired. It was a fight uh, fought with elbows as you can see. The elbows by Decker of course he's uh, very well versed in them. He knows how to use the elbows. Good punches there. Few kicks though. That was strange because normally you see kick Decker kick much more like this. The terrible, damaging, punishing high kicks of Ramon Diamond Decker. Okay, round three. Can you describe round three of Cesar Decker 2, the rematch? Yeah, I saw that he was very tired. He becomes very tired. His hands were getting lower and lower and lower. So I knew that um, yeah, if I hit him once, he was going down. So just waiting, just a moment of time. So at the end of round three, I hit him with a left hook. No, it was a right uppercut and then a left hook and he went down and finished. Cesar was doing good but only being lured closer to his doom as Decker initiated his punching and kicking assault in that third round. Many had thought that Cesar had come into this fight too soon, only keeping uh, that one month break. He should have had at least 90 days, but Decker was coming in with only one intention and that was to end this fight even quicker than the first fight. Well, Ramon will not be denied. You can see the sheer determination of the young man, a man they call Diamond Decker, with the face of an angel, with the spirit of a fighter. Uh, Decker is now getting really, really much too strong for the poor Cesar, who is being rescued by the referee. And yeah, Cesar was under immense pressure in his hometown to win this fight, and thus the one-month layoff 
but it was Decker who knew he had his number. At this moment, Decker probably couldn't have been beaten, beaten by any man alive in his weight division. That's so true, that's so true. And he has been an example for so many people, Diamond Decker, and in his weight division, but also outside that. Ramon Decker is really the superb example of a fighter who is really on top of his medal. Even the desperation er elbows there by Cesar could not stop the crushing defeat by Decker. With that right uppercut and left hook, it was all over. Decker had done it again in one month's time, had pretty much proven everyone right. It was too soon for Cesar to climb back into the ring with the diamond. You see almost the chilling efficiency with which he truly works. He stands there, he looks, he never lets, uh, lets his opponent off the hook. It's always there, the hands, the crushing punches, the punishing power. One, two, three, four, five punches. Always a sequence of it, and there he goes. He knocks him out cold. Out cold indeed. And that's it. The fists of the legend, Ramon Decker. I think it's one of your stronger weapons, your left hook. Left hook, yeah. Left Not boxing, hook. but my left hook is uh, very famous. In the earlier part of your career, you fought another Frenchman called Richard Nam from France. Tell us what happened in that fight. Uh, the first time I fought Richard Nam, it was in uh, in France, and then I was a B-class fighter, and he was already uh, yeah. European a European, European champion. champion. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't know that. So when I saw him, I said, "Yeah, I will fight," you know, because I didn't know him. What was? It? Yeah, I lost that fight on points, but it was a very heavy fight for him and for me. Mm -hmm. So the rematch was in Amsterdam. And then at that time, I knocked him down in round four by a punch on his left hook and a punch on the body. Yeah, I witnessed that fight. He also f had a lot of difficulties in handling your low kicks in that fight, Ramon. You kicked him so hard, even on his defense, that he could not continue that fight. So that was another illusion, less for the French people. Your next opponent is Kevin Morris from Great Britain. Yes, and there were two brothers. Yeah. Morris. I fought his brother also before this this fight, and uh, they were very good boxers they were from from England. From England, so they yeah. they're famous because of the boxing. But yeah, kickboxing is something different. So. And this was Ramon in his development stages, trial and error time. As we saw some flash from the man from Holland with a spinning hook kick, and we saw a lot of craziness. He was making his on-the-job training trial and error that would later forge one of the greatest fighters of all time. My kicks were very good, my high kicks and yeah. my low kicks. So that's, yeah, I think that's why the judges gave you the decision in that fight. My when kicks would make more points. Yeah. And Decker had taken his kicking to the next level as many people thought he was starting to kick just like a tie. It was the power, it was the commitment. And with that power and commitment, sometimes came the injuries. Because Decker always trained the intensity of a madman, throwing everything, including those kicks, with full power. Whenever it was a kick, it was always full power. There was no holding back there. It was just like he was punching always with the intention of knocking somebody out. Yeah, and there he is fighting just like a tie, trapping the leg. And it was those kicks to the body, kicks to the leg, everything. Uh, that It was like swinging a baseball bat. Decker was renowned uh, not only for those devastating punches, but uh, also those hammers below the waist, those shins of steel, uh, of which he would occasionally set up with the punches and then blast the low kick occasionally. Uh, he was really becoming feared for that power. One of the reasons why he had so many injuries in, in his later years on his shins and on his ankles were because of these kicks. There was always full power behind them and he didn't care if somebody blocked it. Of course, those kicks were so fast, usually they could not be, blo be blocked. But when they were blocked, then of course the injuries were usually quite great. But that did not deter Ramon Decker. He kicked anyway. Yeah, and what he did was he would actually try to kick through his opponent. And... Uh, the opponent's legs definitely fell prey to that. He would crack guys open time after time again. 
and the people where they got with the name Ramon Decker they uh, started to shiver thinking that they had to go in the ring with this demonstration of destruction then there is this other English opponent by the name of Kevin Morris who takes you on what happened in that fight yeah he was very afraid you know running around and yeah I gave him some good punches but after that he started running and he didn't want to fight anymore so he quit it had gotten to the point where Decker's opponents were so afraid of him that they fought merely to survive but this pre presented a new problem for Ramon rather than to try and shoot it out with his opponent in the middle of the ring he had to drive them to the corner and to finish them off with his punches and kicks Ramon Decker was of course one of the most superbly prepared fighters ever a man who never let go he was always very dedicated in training, always strong, always powerful, always with loss of stamina. He needed that because the people were so afraid of him now, his fighters, his opponents, they ran away. They tried to hide, but they couldn't hide. The ring was just too small and Decker did exactly what he wanted, did exactly what he set out to do, and that was to create a knockout, usually a devastating KO. You start fighting in the Netherlands at some big events, promoted by me, Carl Hemmers, and Tom Haring. One of the first A-class fights you fought was against a guy named Michel Ubergen from Chakariki in Holland. What do you remember of that fight? Uh, that fight was, uh, was a very quick guy, you know, very tall, and he makes a lot of points, but not, not strong, you know, his kicks and his punches were not so strong. So I don't know, remember which one, but he said that he got a knee in his in Roy. his cross. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it wasn't. You know, but he was afraid. It wasn't much of a challenge for you in fighting that fight. No, right? not at all. Then your real world famous breakthrough came against your opponent Nampon from Thailand. That time he was a reigning world champion from the Lumpini Boxing Stadium, who is the highest ranked in Thailand. Some promoters in the Netherlands promoted that fight live to Thailand. It was the first time the Dutch audience saw big name world class fighters all fighting in one event. I think your fight against Nampon was the fight of the night. Nampon tried to survive for five rounds. This was the first time you fought a Thai champion, a real big name fighter from Asia. How did you go in to that fight, Ramon? Yeah, I know him. I saw some videotapes of him when he fought in Bangkok and uh, I was really impressed because he was a very good fighter. And he was world champion fr and champion from Thailand in that weight. So that, uh, that's one of the most uh, uh, important belts for me, that IMF world champion belt. That's the International Muay Thai Federation. You almost knocked him out. I think it was a left hook. Yeah, again. You got an eight count. Yeah. Uh, he got two times eight counts, I think. No, he got twice an eight count. You kicked him in the face, you punched him in the head, kicked and punched him on his liver. But he, was, he was very strong, very tough, you know, he didn't go down. So Yes, there was no respect from you at all fighting the Thai champion. You just said to me that he was from Thailand and that the title was very important for you. Yeah, I really wanted to win that fight. I really wanted to, uh, to show them that uh, a guy from Holland can... Uh, be even strong or stronger than, than one of them, you know, one of the time. It is quite unique in that weight class. Nobody did that before. You were the first fighter to accomplish this. Straight after that fight, you fight against Cherry Vanek, a new Thai champion. There is a story before this fight, and I'm the one who knows this story. The Thais wanted to have their revenge, and they put their new Thai champion to fight you, the Thai Cherry Vanek. You said to me before that fight, and I remember this very well, you saw a fight of boxing champion Sugar Ray Leonard a couple of weeks before your fighting. And in that fight, you noticed a nice boxing combination from Sugar Ray. Did the combination work? A what very quickly boxing combination, really, really fast. And I wanted to try it on Cherry, and uh, it worked out very well. It worked out very well, because yeah. after the fight, I, I said to you, Ramon, what are you doing? He said, that was exactly the combination <laughs> I saw from Sugar Ray. Unbelievable. The Thai champion was knocked out badly, Ramon. He couldn't even stand up himself. No, I have to, have to help him. 
So just as soon as Ramon was developing that attitude of kicking like a tie, he introduced the ties to the punches of Western boxing with that devastating knockout over Cherry. Decker had done it again, done it his way, done it with that left hook at the tail end of a punishing combination over the legend himself, and the hometown crowd roared its appreciation. People were suspecting he was now a kicker, but then he proved once again he was very much a puncher as well. The Thais had not seen these kind of punches before. They were used to the knees, they were used to the elbows, they were used to the high kicks. But it was with that ice-cold-blooded efficiency that he set up those punches that he had so well schooled under the tutelage of Cora Hemmers and devastated the Thai champion with that final hook uppercut. Decker was now becoming a legend around the world and the Thais wanted him beaten badly. So did this young chap. His younger brother, who was becoming a left hooker himself, and the great Rob came and lifts the, the future champion up as Decker goes and pays his respects to the fallen champion. Decker, always the consummate sportsman, had nothing personal against the Thais, but I think the country of Thailand wanted a bit of payback. At that point, they really were getting nervous, and they invited you to Thailand for the first time. First time, it was the first time. Yeah. Nampong. Nampong. The rematch. Rematch. And uh, yeah, they asked if I, if I want to bring the belt with me, but yeah. I didn't. You know, <laughs> you, know you were going to want to get <laughs> out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was a very good fight. And uh, it was the first time with elbows and everything. It was your first time in Thailand fighting with elbows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with elbows. Yeah, with elbows. Yeah. On their rules. What did this huge crowd of media do to you? Did it have any effect on you? Yeah, it was not normal, you know. The first time when I saw that, was uh, really impressed. And it was in April, that was what I remember. It was very hot, it was a record, it was 40 degrees or something, you know. And uh, yeah, it was very, very hot. That humanity, did it do something with you, Ramon? Did it take a lot away from your conditioning? Yeah, we trained in uh, Rob Common, had a house over there. We trained at, uh, at, at his place. I remember. Yeah, yeah. And he was fighting also. And Michael Leo fought and we went all to Thailand. So you prepared at Rob Kamen's house? Yeah. So you're in Thailand with a temperature of 40 degrees. It's your first fight in Thailand. How much did these factors take something away from your capacity as a fighter? I, I felt better because yes. of the, yeah, yeah. I felt better. When it's so hot and uh, for me it's no problem to fight with that temperature. No, but I also think maybe the preparation did a lot during that fight. Yeah, I trained only uh, one week in Thailand. Before, I, I trained in Holland, and one yeah. week before that fight, I trained in Thailand. Did you know immediately that you couldn't win on points in Thailand? Obviously, you saw fights in Thailand and knew that a phalang, which is a Thai word for foreigner, could hardly win on points in Thailand. We all saw fights where the foreigner fought for five rounds and won at least four from the five rounds, but still would lose the fight on points. Yeah, that's what, what, what I knew before, you know, the, you must knock him out to win, you know, on points it's impossible to win, so... Yes. But that's difficult to fight also, if you, if you know that you, if you don't knock him out, you lose, that's difficult. So you start really putting pressure to force yeah, the knockout? Yeah, too much, yeah, too much pressure and uh, you're getting, bl yeah, you, yeah, if you're fighting too much for the knockout, you... Uh, now, a knockout comes naturally, but if you try to force the knockout, you can walk into a punch yourself. That's a boxing and tire boxing law. I saw that fight and I think you won all five rounds, Ramon. Yeah, yeah I normal European rules. Are, uh, I won. Yes, you would have won easy. It's always an entirely different scenario when you go to a man's country and fight him at his own national sport. Much like taking on the Brazilian soccer team in Brazil, Decker was coming in against Nam Palm at Lumpini Stadium, the mecca of Muay Thai in Thailand. Well, you can imagine the difficulty he's facing there, the temperature, the climate, uh, the, their way of scoring the fights, and of course it's difficult. They all expect him 
to they all want him to do because he is uh, defeating their national pride he is better in their national sport than their fighters so he has to score a knockout and that's not always possible yeah and the funny thing was is that under Muay Thai the kicks and the knees are as you said before counted more in the scoring so Decker had his own unique way of imposing his will but the tie was playing to the crowd and Decker even though he was game was not going to get his decision this particular night the tie was doing everything he could to keep that uh, fight within the rules and within the scoring of the native culture and within the scoring of Muay Thai itself and even though Decker tried some very fancy schmancy techniques the tie only was amused and the judges themselves were not amused as they awarded the victory to the tie and Decker in his heart probably wanted some more of that man again. Did the crowd think that Decker had won? We don't know, but the people around the world thought that he had. There is this other fight which has been broadcast all over Asia and Europe and I think that was the fight where your name became really terrifying, your fight against Koban. Koban was at that time the biggest name from Thailand. He had never been knocked out. He knocked out opponent after opponent. I think at that moment you fought him. He was also the reigning world champion boxing by the WBC. It turned out to be one of the most impressive trips for the whole team Decker when we all went to Thailand to watch your fight against Koban. Yeah. It was a rematch yeah, because I fought Koban uh, a couple of months before in Paris. I know about that story. Yeah. Yes, and, and uh, now they want to have a rematch in Thailand against Koban. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew that I have to knock him out. You know, I have to do everything to win this fight. So I think they made a mistake in a moment. Yeah, a big mistake. Because I, I know in Paris you weren't yourself. You had a lot of personal problems. You were not able to train for at least three weeks before that fight. The Thais thought after the victory from Koban in France, finally we have an opponent who can beat Decker for our own audience in Thailand. What happened in that fight, Ramon? Yeah, what happened, I uh, punched, I gave him almost 25, 30 punches on his head before he went down. But, uh, yeah, he didn't come up. I won the final knockout first round. Now, Koban had thought going into this fight that he was the man who had Decker's number. He had stopped him before in their previous meeting. But Decker was probably angered by losing that decision to Nampalm, so he wanted to make a crisp and clear impression in the minds of all those in Thailand. And impression he would as he knocked the champion down with a flurry of unanswered punches, the referee stopped him mercifully. Uh, so Koban, who had come in like a dancing fool, was about to go out uh, on his back as Decker was just going to jump on him and make their no judge's decision this time, a la the Nampon thing. He was going to make sure that the crowd was going to be in awe of that punching power and the crowd was in awe indeed as a matter of fact they sat there with their mouths closed and it was an eerie silence it was the biggest victory in your career what a surprise yeah, even it was me. quiet uh, in the stadium I think. yeah yeah you know? yeah it was quiet Thank 15 you. thousand people there was saying nothing nobody said nothing uh, no yeah uh, it's, that's part of the betting as well, I think, you know? Yeah. A lot of I think everybody lost the money. Now, nobody likes to lose money, but in this case, all the Thai did. What also was crazy is that the doctor and the referee jumped into the ring and tried to get Koban on his feet. Yeah, he was gone. He was, uh, yeah. You hit him with a right elbow as well? Yeah, also. At that point, you became a big star in Asia. And not only Asia, as the fight was broadcasted on screen sport in Europe and watched by millions. Everybody knew now who Ramon Decker was. Did you find it more difficult or easier with the status of a star to fight your new opponents? No, not at all. I think it's going to be difficult. I knew it's going to be more difficult for me because they're going to prepare new guys for me. They're going to train many. And there are so, so many Thai fighters in that weight category. So, yeah. After that fight with Koban. They asked me if I, want to, if I want to stay for a month, so all my whole family came over. And that I was one of <laughs> that was yeah, one of yeah. the things your your stepfather, trainer, Cohen said. Uh, arranged that uh, yeah we won't go home, but uh, let everybody come over to Thailand 
Then we stay here and I fight one more fight. And that was against Seng Chung Noi, the deadly kisser. They called him the deadly kisser because sometimes he kissed his opponents before knocking them out. Was there a lot of kissing in that fight, Ramon? Yeah, I gave him one kiss in round four. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that fight and you won at least four from the five rounds. Yeah. Now the Thai people got totally frustrated and disappointed that they could not find a Thai opponent who could really beat you. Yeah. The frustration can be described as a soccer match like Holland versus Germany, where Holland lost in 1974 the World Championships against Germany. Against Germany. Yeah. Yeah, can you compare it like that? Yeah, yeah. it's the same, I think. Yeah. Ramon Decker was now becoming the fastest rising star in Thailand in Muay Thai and he was being matched against the best but that rising fame was a dual-edged sword the Thais paid good money to see him fight yet in some ways they did not want him to win as he uh, did not win such fights as against the legendary Santanoi. Decker would try to play the game as well as he could, try and be tactical, try and fight like a tie, try and use the point system in his head, and it was very hard for him to win on points in Thailand at that time. Well, time and time again, uh, he met this problem, trying to do his thing, trying to beat the ties with their own game. But of course, they had become uh, very uh, fans of him as well. It, was, it, came, it became, became so difficult for him to train there that people came and watched the way he was training. People were sitting down and writing down the things he and his trainer were doing there in time. So we had the very strange situation that the ties were learning to see, learning to train the way that Decker was training. And some of the ties who had suffered defeats at the hand of Decker uh, had sent a message to other ties to follow, including Sanctanoi, that if you fought aggressive against this young man from Holland, that you might end up, as Koban did, flat on the deck. So they started to fight more conservatively and to hope for those decisions, because it was very hard for anyone to stop Ramon Decker at that time, including this man, the deadly kisser, Santanoi. Even though he tries for those elbows to try and open up a cut, it's really uh, a conservative match that he tries to fight. He doesn't try to go for the finish at all times. Well, Ramon Decker had become so popular and so famous in, in Bangkok, in Thailand, that if you arrived in Bangkok in, and you, you would go up to a taxi driver, you say you're Dutch, the first thing they would say is Ramon Decker, Ramon Decker, Diamond Decker. That name had become a legend. And it was a legend for such wars with punches, with kicks, with knees, elbows. And even though he would cut the tie, he would seemingly win the fight. And he would initiate his own win the fight. And he would initiate his own attack, fight at will. Uh, the benefit of the doubt was always given to the hometown boy. And it had to be frustrating on one half, but on the other hand, Decker just liked to fight, and he liked the adulation he was getting from the fans. The people on the street were just absolutely enamored with this blonde-headed European. Well, you can see here that he's really dictating the pace of the fight. He's cutting in San Gennaro, and even though he is so much stronger, he is dictating the fight, they still made him lose the fight. And it was sometimes frustrating, but on the other hand, he knew that if he didn't knock him out, he would lose the fight. But I think in his heart, he knew that the fans were behind him. He knew that the people around the world knew what the reality of the situation was. Uh, any good sportsman knows that sometimes to play the game, you have to deal with some uh, extremely strange circumstances around, and politics can be a factor. It's very hard to get a hometown decision, especially in Thailand. Muay Thai is the national sport. And Decker knew this going in.
but he gladly and willingly played the game because in some ways it almost didn't matter as long as he knew in his heart that he had won it didn't matter what the judges thought it mattered what he thought it mattered what his trainer thought it mattered what the fans thought and people around the world were starting to rever this man along with the living legends in the sport of martial arts even though there's those typically tight techniques like elbow he outclassed it he cut a man like Santino with an elbow which is really amazing no other foreigner had been able to do that no other Falang foreigner had been able to cut ties with the elbows, fight like the ties, and he was out gaming them. He was beating them at their own game. People knew in their hearts who the man was, and at that moment, regardless of the announced winner, Decker was the man. It's Thailand, 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 Thailand. Yeah. A new Thai champion is created. One of the newest champions goes by the name of Sak Mong Ko. You fought him twice, I think. What happened in that fight, Ramon? I, I fought him only once. You fought him once? Once, once yeah. It was in Thailand? In Thailand, in Bangkok. And I heard that he had six different trainers before my fight. Six different trainers trained him, especially for me. Yeah, to knock me out, but uh, that never happened, you know. You were still standing at the end of round five. Okay? Yeah, again. I think it was a bloody fight as well. Yeah, I got an elbow in round four, I think. But he received some elbows as well and lost a lot of blood. It was one of the most bloodiest fight I ever saw. How did you experience these fights in Thailand? Fighting with elbows, the newest Thai champion number one again on their list. Did you find them getting stronger? Did you find more difficulties in fighting that many different new Thai champions? No, the fighters are starting to fight different, you know. In the, in the beginning it was only kicking, and, but now they're starting to be more uh, complete. complete. Yeah, starting more boxing, elbows, kicking. And, uh, yeah, even the mo they're going to make uh, punches to the body, liver punches. That, yeah, they look a lot of m uh, videos from me, from yeah. my fighters, so they try to imitate me. So you changed the fighting style in Thailand? Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. Well, one thing became clear, that was that Ramon, as the years went by, he became more and more susceptible to cuts. Of course, uh, fighting in a very, uh, very difficult martial arts like Muay Thai, where you can use hard contact like the elbows and the knees, uh, you get cut in fights. That's, of course, almost uh, unavoidable. And now, the, all the wear and tear, the scar tissue that he had developed, during these fights and made it more and more difficult for him to defend against these kind of blows. And that's what happened here, for example. One uh, elbow uh, k just opened up a huge cut on the, uh, on the side of his head, which resulted finally, of course, in uh, him losing a fight. But Decker would always come back and never be deterred by the blood. He would always come back to try and end the fight, but it was difficult at that moment because they would get into the clinches, they would tie him up, play the game with him, and go for those quick cuts, and he would come out and go for the knockout. But it was becoming more and more as if the ties were starting to figure Decker's style out a little bit uh, and use their own techniques, using that elbow, which was a, a, a weapon that he really didn't get to fight with too much while he fought in Europe. Uh, and the cuts became more and more a factor as he would come to Thailand and sometimes it would frustrate the man from Holland. But in that frustration, uh, it only led for him to be that much more determined to not only re-establish himself in the hearts of Thailand, but also in the hearts of the fans around the world with that punching and kicking style that had made him famous throughout the universe of fighting. He had become so famous in Thailand that people started really to study his videos, study his fights. There were really uh, trainers, especially, uh, who were called in to uh, instruct the fighters who were fighting him, just to make sure that their fighter would win, because they were so proud on their Muay Thai, and the Thai are very proud people. And when Decker found out that they were bringing in trainers, this only reaffirmed his own commitment to getting back into the gym, 
to hammering out not only the tried and tested techniques that had got him to the top of the world of kickboxing and Muay Thai, but also to get through with some furious new combinations under the tutelage of his corner and mentor, Core Hammers. Decker was really determined more than ever to not only be at the center of the stage, but also be the stage itself. And he would do that through the power and the commitment of those techniques because he was getting ready to face another dragon, another crosstown rival, as he was going to come back into the ring of Holland. Yeah, I fought about seven years only in Thailand and in France. So Gilbert was the first one who wanted to fight against me. Ramon Dagger had been fighting in Thailand a long time. He had been fighting Thai only, actually. He had been fighting the Thai way. This fight with Gilbert Ballantyne, that was a fight also with elbows. But still, the way people score the fights in Europe, the way we fight in Europe, they, they're different. And he found out that uh, an injury which had plagued him already during training suddenly opened up in this fight once again. But it was Gilbert's unorthodox fighting style that uh, really caused people alarm in that Decker had been fighting these ties, but Gilbert was giving him angles, giving him crazy moves, giving him all different kinds of things. And even though Decker had controlled the fight, it was that annoying injury that Noel Vandelhoven had given him as a, a, a little present one week before this fight that came back to haunt him in this fight. Controversy surrounded the decision of this fight, but Gilbert had done quite a bit of good work in this fight, in that crazy, rangy, wild, unorthodox spinning techniques. Valentine did get the win on this particular night, but it wasn't all that they were going to see. They were going to see each other again. Yeah, it was, it was an easy fight for me. and uh, It was with elbows, yes. tie rules. Yes. I had a cut in, on my eye, but it was not from Gilbert, because one week before that fight, I trained with Noel van Heuvel in uh, in my gym, and he cut me with an elbow. Many considered you as a winner in that fight. Valentine was a student of Tom Haring, and Haring was president of his own organization. He had his own judges, and there was a lot of controversy. Yeah. Many people speculate that the first three rounds of the fight, you gave Gilbert enough problems, especially with your elbows. Yeah, if you see, I, I, f I fight really like a tie on that, in that fight. You know, I don't kick, only kicks. Yeah. Not so many punches, but only kicks to, the, to, the, to his body. Yeah, that was uh, the way I fought the last seven years in Thailand. Fighting a Thai Chanoi, an elbow specialist who lived in Germany at that time. What happened in that fight, Ramon? Uh, Chanoi was a very difficult opponent. He uh, is very, uh, I don't know, technical. Good, technical, very good. Yeah. He's very good with, right? good with elbows because he, in the third round or fourth round, he hit me with an elbow. And I got a very big cut from him. So the cut on the forehead is from Chanoi. It's, it's from, from, it's from it's Chanoi. It's yeah. from Chanoi. That is quite a souvenir Chanoi gave you in that fight. What happened after that third round? Could you continue fighting with that cut? Yeah, I knew that I maybe the referee is going to stop the fight, so I have to. Yeah, I have to stop at low kicks, but yeah. it was too late. After two rounds, yeah. He couldn't walk anymore, but yeah, the, the end of the fight. Yeah, his leg was totally bruised. And you still continue fighting with the cut. I think your cornerman, Cor Hammers, did a hell of a job in that fight. Yeah, that was a very big one, but they, they had the super glue. And the super glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of the wonder, <laughs> wonder tricks we had in the corner. Yeah, super yeah, glue. Super called. glue, yeah. But it helped. So with the application of that super glue, Effectively, Ramon had become bionic, and he was going to need those uh, extra special tricks up the sleeve of his corner to get through this fight against this madman technician 
and Chanoy. Chanoy really uh, seemed to be slippery in getting that elbow on the inside, and Decker was undeterred. He was going to go out there to try and knock this man out, but Chanoy was ice cold, meeting Decker on his own home ground, trying to go again and again to that elbow, which if there ever was a weakness to Decker's arsenal, it was with the elbow. Chanoy wanted to exploit that weakness. But like I said before, Decker was undeterred and was swinging for the knockout until the very end. After that fight, the next adventure, and you could describe it as an adventure, it could be said that this whole thing could be like a highlight story by itself. Your fight against Horono, an American TIE fighter. He had some Negro blood. His father was a Negro American from the Navy. Now, it was the king's birthday. I remember they picked us up at the hotel at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. They picked us up in a small bus. The air conditioning was broken, and it was extremely hot that day. We sat in the bus with nine people. Alonda Wheat, Rob Kamen, you, me, Carr, Liu Fat, just to name a few. We drove about three hours through the middle of Bangkok. And when we finally arrived at the so-called place where the fight supposed to take place, nobody was there. Yeah, <laughs> there was nobody there. <laughs> of course, the Thai who was driving us didn't know nothing. Lucky for us, and we thought at that time it was a mistake, Rob Kamen spoke and asked a Thai with a motorcycle standing on the street where the fight took place. His answer shocked us. He said we were at the wrong stadium. So they drove us for another two hours. But now, of course, we knew it was on purpose. With nine people in a small bus, with no air conditioning and a temperature outside of 40 degrees, now we had to cross this leg. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, I remember. That. Yeah, sure. You remember? You remember, I remember me crawling out of the window and saying that we're all gonna drown? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it is these type of stories which makes it worth to live the life we did. Yeah, the after, the after, after, after is, uh, is funny. You know, you can laugh, but before that, it's, Bef it's not before normal. Before it yeah. takes you way out of your concentration. Yeah, sure. Because when I when we arrived there, I came out of the bus. I had uh, my tape in and uh, and did some warming up. And then you had to sit in the ring on your knees for at least an hour after that five-hour drive in a small fan with no air conditioning. Yeah. It was the king's birthday with a live audience record of over 100,000 people and broadcasting was done live in Thailand and throughout the whole of Asia. It turned out to be a very good fight with an even matchup. Did you study it especially for Arono? I saw some fights from Arono on tape and I, and I knew that he had some very good el elbows. So. Yeah. I have to watch out for them, because I had enough scars, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You didn't need another one? No. Uh. And Ramon was not one to avoid a tough challenge. Where his last opponent had been more of a technician, Arona was just a windmill of flurry and activity that could match Decker almost power for power. Whereas Ramon would start to build up a lead early on, it was Arona that would come raging back with his own elbows, and it was that left elbow that was a deciding factor. And this was possibly one of Decker's greatest fights, because in some ways, even though they were throwing everything in the kitchen sink, including this Terminator by the name of Arona, uh, Decker was now bringing out the very best in his opponents from Thailand. You can see the frenzy with which Rono is attacking. He's an incredibly strong fighter, and he knows that if he would be able to beat Decker, everlasting glory would be his. Once again, the left elbow of Rono is trying to hit those weak scar tissues on the face of the Dutchman. But look how clever uh, Decker is defending himself. But he has a tough time. He has a real tough time with this motivated time with this terrible fighting machine by the name of Orono. And this fight went back and forth. It had so many turns and twists. They were trading with the kicks to the face. They were just blasting each other, trying in earnest to knock each other out the whole way. And Decker was blasting him to the front kick, to the chin, everything he could. Both men, they tried clowning with each other. They tried tricks up their sleeves like spins. It was really an affair where there was a lot of pride at stake, a lot of ego at stake, and with all the respect they had for each other, they were trying to get the victory and to ride 
on that name on their resume, a victory over one or the other was going to be a solid thing. Decker had his hands full that night in Thailand, but so did Arona. No other, no other partner had ever been able to put such an impressive mark on their sport in Muay Thai as, as uh, Ramon Decker. But in this fight, you could see the best coming out of both. You see the, uh, the cut with Rono, you see the cut with, with Ramon Decker, and both won it so bad. This definitely was one of the best fights on many people's list of top fights ever in Muay Thai. Now, how did you feel going over there with so many Dutch fans, really knowing that you beat your opponent on points, but lost to a just decision all the times? Or do you think, oh, well, I have the tape and everybody can see I won clearly? Yeah, that's but uh, it's, uh, it's bad for your motivation, you know, because before the next time you think, yeah, if I don't knock him out, I'm, uh, I lost this game already, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult. Next fight against Deshaven, you knocked him out. No more point decisions. Yeah, I think so, yeah. More aggression and pressure fighting in Holland? Well, yeah, especially if you fight against a tie in your own country, then you think, yeah, now yeah, I can lose now, you know. I think that fight was in Rotterdam against Deshaven, yeah. the, the tie fight. Yeah, yeah, I hit him very hard on his, on his body, on his liver. Liver punch? Yeah. Liver punch, second round. You couldn't stand up? No. Uh, yes, he faced Ramon Decker in Holland, and he was incredibly hard to beat. In front of the hometown crowd, he always seemed so dominant. And uh, the tie was uh, clowning around, trying to win the points as far as the showmanship. But with Decker fighting him in uh, Rotterdam, Holland, it was going to need more than that. It was going to be more of a punch-kick situation of which Decker was the master at that night with a devastating body punch. Once again, it shows the versatility of Ramon Decker because the tie has his the defense very tucked up high, tucked up behind his guard, and all of a sudden that devastating liver punch comes in, and that hurts him so bad. Once again, a KO victory for Ramon Decker. My kicks are left harder, and my punches also. Despite your right-handed? Yeah. Is that because the way you train? Is there a special way of training? No, I think that's... It's the natural. It's natural. Born, yeah, you're born yeah, that yeah. way. So, you fight first in France, and you had a hell of a fight there. You had a big problem with your ankle. And me, myself, as a promoter from the rematch, became very nervous after seeing that injury. Yeah, I was very injured, yeah. Yeah, you were very injured. And then one week later, you had to have this fight, this huge rematch in the Netherlands against Gilbert Ballantyne. Many fighters have that one opponent that brings out the very best in them. In this case, Ramon had the crosstown rivalry with Gilbert Ballantyne. Here in the rematch, Decker and Gilbert go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the entire fight. Decker dealt out punishment, Gilbert dealt out punishment. It was the injuries, though, that had plagued Decker so many times before this fight, and many thought that he was not going to prevail again, but prevail he did and with force, but Gilbert wasn't going to give up at all. This is a lot like the classic rivalries in boxing between Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, and even in the heavyweights with Joe Frazier versus Ali. The classic opponent, they brought out the best in each other, two Dutch guys going toe to toe. You can see that Ramon is already heavily relying on boxing techniques. Because of all the operations he's had on his legs, He's had, I think, six operations in two years. He just actually couldn't really kick with his right leg. He had to do it all with the left one, but still punching and kicking and going strong in this fight with Little Bella. Look at the way they eye each other. These two guys, they're just amazing. It's, it's interesting because both these guys on paper have similar styles because they're both punchers. They both like to throw the wild kicks. But uh, when you see the fight in its entirety, you realize that even though they are punchers, they punch entirely different. Uh, Ballantyne is in some ways more of a brawler, more of, of a street fighter, where Decker is the... Now, now look here, uh, Ballantyne really tried to snatch this uh, fight away from Decker, but it was Decker's heart which eclipsed his injuries. It was that big heart indeed, plus the years of training that uh, he had had 
that forged a, an iron will that even though he was only kicking with that left leg, the pain he was feeling in the right leg did not deter him from taking this win against his crosstown rivalry, Gilbert Ballantyne. We shouldn't forget that Ballantyne was a great, great champion in his own right, a formidable fighter. And to be able to, even at this stage of his career, to wage a war with Gilbert Ballantyne is really an amazing feat. And I think that there was no bad blood after a while. There may have been at the initial time when they met, the first and even before the second fight. But after a war like this, where these two warriors go toe to toe, head to head, they gain that mutual respect for one another as Decker notches the win and gets his revenge against the man from Chakariki, Gilbert Valentine. But I couldn't kick with my right leg, only left. My right hand was uh, injured, so yeah, so, so I just 50 percent just in the ring. So there was a half deck of fighting. Half deck against fighting 100 percent Valentine. Yeah. <laughs> now first you are fighting Desharwin in Rotterdam, then Valentine in Amsterdam, and then Pralom Run in your own hometown Breda. Yeah. I promoted that fight with Carhemus, and we wanted to give you a fight in your own hometown in Breda against a good Thai fighter. Did those circumstances stimulate you in that fight? Yeah, sure. It's, it's better to fight in your own country or in your own place, you know, Breda. Yeah. Yeah, all the people who come and watch, yeah. You want to give them a special show, you know, and uh, do your best more than normal, I mm -hmm. think. Because you were very aggressive at that fight. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Thai just but I was too aggressive, so the first round and the second round, it didn't work, you know. I was mm -hmm. too... You wanted to knock him out. Yeah, but the knockout came uh, in naturally. The, uh, naturally, in round four. And Decker's visits to Thailand became less frequent, but nonetheless, the Thais sometimes would go to him and seek him out in his home turf, and this created sort of a thing where he had to rise up and figure out a way to win. Well, of course, the wear and tear on Ramon was becoming more and more clear. Hundreds of fights, years of wars, that takes a toll. But still, every time once again, it was again Ramon Decker who was fighting for his life, fighting for his fans, fighting for his career, because he did not want to give up. He did not want to stop a career that was going so strong. Even though he had all these injuries, all these operations, and actually he was, at this stage of his career already, sort of a handicapped fighter, a man who could actually only kick with one leg. If a surgeon who had operated on him so many times would have known that he was still fighting, that he was still using the leg sometimes, for example, what we just saw right now, the right leg, he should not do that. And it was an interesting thing because Decker fought in some ways not only for himself, for the honor of his legacy, but he fought for the fans. He felt a huge obligation to keep the fans happy because it was uh, the fans, after all, that had led him through such an illustrious career, had paid his bills for him, had paid him the great purses he'd made in his so many fights. So he did feel that obligation, and he felt the obligation to those who had supported him, and he was going to support them by continuing in this miraculous career with win after win, with another crushing, devastating knockout over another very tough TIE fighter. You can see the way he fights. He never gives up. And when he goes, he goes once again for a total knockout, a devastating knockout, and a finishing blow. We are now in the year 1989. It is very quiet around the person Ramon Decker after almost fighting 190 fights. What happened, Ramon? I had an injury on my ankle. I had an infection in Thailand. And uh, my, something with my bone structure. It's because of all the kicking in 200 fights almost. Mm -hmm. And then the infection, I got it in Thailand, so they all, almost have to amputate my right leg. So after that, when I recovered, uh, I was afraid for fighting again, you know, with the, because I don't want to lose my leg. Especially if you kick with it. Yeah, also. So when came the decision that you wanted to start fighting again? I love fighting, you know, and it's getting better with my legs. So I've been 
I started training, getting better. Yeah. So then I started fighting again. One of the first fights after that injury is against a Moroccan named Hassan Kazrui, who made a big name by knocking out some popular ties. You took that fight, and it was very exciting to watch. Every round was exciting. Yeah, but because he's a very difficult guy, Hassan Kazrui. Because he, ca he came from Taekwondo, mm -hmm. he had some very strange kicks, you know, and mm -hmm. movements, so something new for me, because I fought all the ties and everything, and then suddenly against Hassan, you yeah. fought totally different. I think it were your boxing skills that dominated that fight. Yeah, yeah. I, I was stronger than him, you know, but yeah, my boxing skills were better, so I knocked him out. Yeah, you knocked him down quite a few times, but he showed a lot of heart in getting up every time. You won that fight. How did it feel to win after a long absence against a real upcoming talented fighter like Kazrui? Yeah, I feel good, away. especially after the injuries, you know. As Decker's career advanced, so did his weight, and he was forced to move up not one but two weight divisions. And there were many hungry young lions ready to try and notch a, a win over this master of the ring. One of these was uh, Hassan Kazriwi, a formidable fighter from Morocco who had wonderful leg techniques coming from a Taekwondo background. And he challenged the old master, and, but it turned out that it was a challenge that he could not really uh, stand up to. It was youth versus experience, but Decker also had that power, and it was the power of the punches, the kicks, the knees, as he stalked the younger man later in the match, and he delivered the knockout once again with those huge punches, those devastating punches. And we can see that Decker is still using the left, the, the right leg, the leg he shouldn't be kicking with. Already his stance is uh, a southpaw stance, so he's forced to use his left leg because he sometimes forgets it. He is so used to using that lethal right kick. Once again, the master of disaster, Ramon Decker wins another fight. After that fight, they have to operate me again. I did six, six operations in two years on the same leg. Yeah. And even though my doctor said, yeah, it's over, you know, you can't fight anymore. But yeah, I got a fighting heart. I want to fight. Yeah. So. At that point, you start changing and developing new techniques to be like more of a southpaw. And you train for other combinations as well? Ah, I changed my old, my old tactic, you know. I, I, I didn't kick on my right leg anymore, only with left. Even my punches were different now because I couldn't stand and walk and move on my feet right. like I'm used to. Okay, the fight against Ryan Simpson, who became another big rising star in Muay Thai in the year 2000. What happened in that fight, Ramon? We went down, same point, just left, he made a left hook, I made a left hook, going down. But he hit me on my eye, I couldn't see after when I, after I knocked down, I couldn't yeah. see. I think that was well very frightened, you know, because I thought, yeah, maybe I'm blind, you know, so I thought, hey, it was this. So. Yeah, yeah. Did you find out what it was? Did the doctor tell you anything? Yeah, and I went to the hospital and there's ah, something with the... Something with the eye. With the they, <laughs> did, they, the didn't, they didn't know what exactly. No, yeah. It's very amazing. I only saw it once more in a boxing match. It's very unique. The two professional, well-trained athletes hit each other at the same time on each other's chin and then go down at the same time. It's a classical incident. You do not see that like in a decade. Now Simpson made his name through you, and the fight was very well matched. And it was enjoyable to see that Decker was still there after your terrible injuries. Of course not the old Decker, because you could notice your different fighting style, and that you did not kick as much anymore. I didn't train them because before that fight, uh, I think it was a month or six weeks that I came out of the hospital and uh, was the still, reco yeah, still recovering. Then another new opponent, a Moroccan fighter named Tarzati from Musa Gym, a good fighter who takes you on. Yeah, but it was it was a tournament. Eh? It was only three rounds, yes. and normally I start after three rounds. Yes, you know when? Uh, yeah, it was too short, and it was uh, yeah. They gave the decision to Tarzati, although you were warming up. Yeah, I think it's it's if it was five rounds, yeah, you would not survive it. Yeah. So you are not really a tournament fighter? 
if it is for five pounds, then I am with yeah. Then Gerard Mamadeus, a world champion full contact who was starting Muay Thai as well. You knocked him out by leg kicks in round three. I think it was leg kicks. What happened in that fight? In the beginning, with opponents like Mamadeus, who has the same fighting style like, for example, Kazrui, can be very dangerous. Did you train differently to fight Gerard Mamadeus? Uh, for every fight I train technically, you know, I watch the videos and I train different, but yeah, he had a big name, Mamadeus. He said he kicked very hard, but he's flexible, but not so strong. So you did not find him a strong kicker? No. I think it was in the beginning with low kicks. He could not take the low kicks, and that is a rule in Thai boxing. You start with low kicks, and then later follow to finish with punching techniques. Then punching, and then yeah. I hit him on his head, and then the referee stopped the fight. And even though Ramon had been forced to change his style to that of a different fighter, to kick mainly with his left kick and to use a different fighting stance, it was right around this time that he fought a very game Mamadeus, and it was right around this time that that new style started to really come into effect for Ramon. Like so many others, uh, Mamadeus wanted to have this chance to fight against the greatest legend of uh, modern Muay Thai. Uh, he wanted to have this chance. He's a great fighter himself, Gerald Mamadeus, but he was still outclassed in some ways. And Decker, still, against orders from doctors and from most sane people, kept kicking with that right leg because some habits are hard to break. He tried that new style and the new style was working, but it was that uh, old, tried and true style that he had used so many times for years and years. And even though he was now stepping up in weight and fighting younger men, bigger men, he still always found a way, sometimes the old way, with the hard kicks and the hard punches to defeat the young lions coming up the ranks. Well, just imagine the pain he must have felt at delivering every right kick. And the kick just is so, it comes so natural. It's just a movement which has been practicing for so many years. It's not something you can stop automatically. Still he made it, still he did it, and still he fought his fight. Against a very game Gerald Mamadeus, a wonderful, great fighter himself, who couldn't take no more, even the kicks that had this debilitating effect. His right kicks, his right low kicks, always powerful, still probably just as painful to himself as to his opponent. Once again, another KO victory for Ramon Deca. There is a lot of fighting in the Netherlands at that point, especially to promoter Mohamed Aitasu, who was promoting in the Netherlands and put on some great fights. Did you like fighting in the Netherlands again at that point? What I mean is there was not a 10-hour flying anymore to Thailand, but just a half-hour drive from your house to the fight. Yeah, also, but I like the flying, you know. Like it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> not you a like, you <laughs> like the flying. Yeah. You didn't like the infections in Thailand, but you like the flying. The flying. The, not the flies, but the flying. Now, your next opponent, you have to fight against Jerry Morris in Holland. Was he a difficult fighter? Yeah, very difficult. He's, yeah, you know, the, uh, um, he runs around. Runs around, yeah. He don't attack, you know, he don't want to fight. He was surviving in the ring, yeah. running for, for five rounds, and, and then, yeah, he didn't want to fight. And it was Morris's frustrating style, his defensive countering style, that gave Decker fits. He didn't want to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Decker. He wanted to move around. He wanted to use his defense and pick his own shots. And it was mainly a boxing match. Nevertheless, we should not forget that uh, Jerry Morris is a formidable fighter himself. Although in this fight, he did not fight the way he should have fought against Ramon Decker. On the other hand, he did what Decker hated. He moved around and scored points. After that fight with Morris, Kazrui challenged you for a rematch. Even though the injuries were starting to plague Ramon on a frequent basis outside the ring, he never brought those injuries inside the ring as excuses. He would always face fighters with full intent, even in rematches. Hassan Kasrili was one of these great fighters that had fought Ramon before and had lost to Ramon, but the press was not uh, uh, very positive after that fight. Well, this time Ramon Decker made sure there was absolutely no room for doubt. 
and no doubt indeed, because no excuses were left after this fight. He got the KO and moved on to his next bout. I won the fight by KO in round two or three, I don't remember. But yeah. uh, my condition was very bad because I didn't train at all. I came out of the hospital again, yeah. That's another operation, so... So you did not really prepare for that fight? No, I think I trained for only a week, maybe two weeks. That was, that was all. You were too strong for him? Yeah, and his, his chin was not so strong. I hit him very hard on his chin, but... Uh, he went down? Yeah. It is amazing Kazrui was getting very popular, and even then, after your long absence of fighting, you still won the fight. Twice he lost now to you, and now you're fighting all of a sudden Sang Shinoi, a Thai fighter. Was there a reason to take that rematch? I think it was a satellite uh, broadcast, I don't know. It was a satellite uh, broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Then I fought uh, Sang Shinoi again. I won the fight on points. More difficulties after all the injuries, you could not use your weapons like your hard kicking techniques? I didn't kick, so I had more boxing. More and it was also a fight with elbows, so... You could fight with elbows? Yeah. As Ramon's career began to wind down, there were a few things that he wanted to do. Exact revenge against old foes that had gotten decisions against him. In this case, Sank Tenoy. And it was a matter of pride that he fought in front of the hometown crowd. And the uh, deadly kisser thought he had won, but Decker had other ideas in this match. It was a great thing to do for Ramon Decker in a fight that was uh, broadcast live to Thailand. Uh, out of the stadium in, uh, in Amsterdam. Great fight by Decker, once again sharp. And you can see the way he's now using his left leg to his uh, full possibilities to score points, to make sure that this time he would leave no room whatsoever to any doubt. Revenge is a very sweet thing, especially if it is extracted in front of a great hometown audience and million, millions watching home in Thailand. And the way he did this was with great composure and with great style. Ramon Decker, once again, is victorious in this fight, in this very hard and tough fight against Sang Chien Noi, the deadly kisser. And it was that time when Ramon had finally perfected that southpaw style, the versatile style that had given men fits around the world. And as he's congratulated by his corner, he now moves to the center of the ring and ironically, he gives uh, a kiss to the cheek of the man known as the deadly kisser. Now that's payback. Last but not least. And Ramon kept fighting, but some wondered how long would he go? How much longer would he stay inside the ring before he retired and moved on to activities outside the ring? Then you fight a tight champion in an event in Morocco. Namkampun, he's from the same uh, camp as uh, Nampun. Yes, he was a very good Thai fighter. A very, very good one, yeah. How did the fight turn out? I lost on points. But yeah, it was uh, live board broadcast to Thailand. Yeah. Thai judges, Thai judges and uh, referees, so... Yeah, Moroccan fans really loved you. Yeah, sure. In some ways, Ramon Decker had reached a stage in his career in which winning or losing didn't really matter so much anymore. He had perfected the art of Muay Thai, using the elbows, the knees, the kicks, the punches, all exactly the way it should be used. And it was his defensive ability, along with his offense, that made him the complete package. If ever there was a fighter who epitomized from head to toe what you need to know about stand-up fighting in the ring, against Thais, against Americans, against people from around the world, it was Ramon Decker, the great one, finally ending a great career. Is there a message you want to give to all your fans around the world, Ramon, like for example to new young upcoming fighters? Uh, if they're watching the video, don't try this at home. <laughs> it's very dangerous. <laughs> very dangerous. <laughs> I hope you like my highlight tape. Thank you for watching. There's no doubt that Ramon Decker has etched a place in history as one of the greatest fighters of all time. I'm Stephen Quadros. I am the Fight Professor. And I've been very proud 
to have worked opposite my broadcast partner, Fred Royers. Fred, what about this Ramon Decker character? Well, Ramon is fabulous, fantastic, and I would like to thank him on behalf of all the Muay Thai community in Holland and all over the world for all the years of pleasure, of excitement, of fantastic experiences that he has given us.